Dodge. Pause. Engage. Engage! Hello and welcome to O2 Inside Line, where O2 and the RFU take you behind the scenes of England rugby. And we're off to Italy this week and I'm feeling molto bene. I oh, know, I don't know what it means either. Before the lads head to Rome, because of the weather, they've had a strange training week. But first of all, we've got a couple of players, Dylan Hartley and Phil Dowson, who are in for a bit of a shock. I know it's been cold here, but that's a ridiculous stalagmite. Guys, thanks for joining us. We're going to play a little game whilst asking you some questions. It's obviously a big win up in Murrayfield, but that win was so important. I think a challenge in itself, going away from home and winning, you know what that's like. Yeah. Um, so for, for this squad and being the first game, going away from home and winning was, was huge for us. Sets you on the road now, but off to the Coliseum. Will you be watching Gladiator on the way out there, on the, you know, on the coach, on the way down to the airport? Just building up that mentality of Maximus to take him on. <laughs> Dills knows that speech off by heart. This is the man that has a book on motivational speaking. That's my bad pages leaders of our time. Uh, I'm can not can really going to get stuck into it. Pick it up. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on, what do I do? Oh. No. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I can't believe you fell for that. Just oh, following up sure. on the, the leadership thing, it just feels like you're giving that little bit of discipline now. It's been happening for a while. Once the dog barks once, it will eventually no, bark again. Uh, Steve <laughs> Peters, the psychologist, told me that I've got a chimp in my head. Really? Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with There's that? A small monkey in a cage in my head somewhere. And that, that's what he said. So. Um, <laughs> that's the expert. <laughs> Let's look at Italy. A lot of the sort of pundits, if you like, are saying this could be a real turning point for Italian rugby. We've got to go out there and we've got to take a big scalp ourselves. It's a big game for us, you know, yeah. especially up front. Everyone's talking about an experience from us, so we're going to play ourselves underdogs again. It's there for us to lose. Um, we're, good, we're going to win. I'm concentrating this time. Are you? Yeah. Go! It wasn't me this time! Um, I pushed it too early! How can you build on the performance against Scotland? I think we need to get the ball. Yeah. I think we just defended. Uh, and, you know, you can't win games by just defending. We need to get the ball and we need to attack. And the good thing from last week is we didn't, we didn't have the ball and we still won the game. And hopefully this week we can put a bit more emphasis on the, the attacking size and show what we can do there. So how was the first cap? Did you enjoy it? Was it everything you thought it would be? Um, it's been a long time coming. Um, so I enjoyed the environment and the atmosphere beforehand. Obviously, we could have performed better, both individually and as a team. But, uh, but in terms of getting a win up there, yeah, first time out was good. Hopefully we'll show you know that character we showed at Murrayfield and mm. you know we'll stick together and we'll get that uh, that away result we're after. We've got the same group of players that have been playing for a while and they've got you know talismanic figures in uh, Parise and Castro Giovanni and um, they're players that we play against all the time. I don't want to play this game. Should we just pretend we're playing it? Yeah. <laughs> Is it worth me putting money on either of you two to score any tries yeah. this weekend? Not on recent form. <laughs> Due to the bad weather, you've moved to the soccer dome for training and we've brought you to the O2. Uh, I can guarantee that you ran in there and started taking corners and penalties straight up, didn't you? Crossbar challenge. Crossbar first challenge, thing first thing up. And is it, there's a bit of a change because it's going to be a first in Rome as well, the first English side to play at the Olympic Stadium. Yeah, it shows how far the, uh, <laughs> sorry, mate, it shows how far the Italian rugby's come on. They've got 70,000 sellout yeah. over there. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's going to be a big challenge and uh, something we'll have to be up for. So you must have enjoyed playing in uh, Flamingo. Yeah. Um, I, that was in Italian, by the way, in yeah. case. Flamingo. Um, no, like Dass, 70,000, you can't turn it down, can you? So, uh, looking forward to it. You side of it? Yeah, this is a side of No cheating! Oh, Quite chemistry, look at the chemistry. Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. So this belongs to us. Can you help her pick it up, please, Dylan? <laughs> thank you. Now it's time to see what some of the other guys are up to inside the camp. Uh, no, we had a uh, snowball fight this morning, so obviously O2 have just renewed their contract. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to show him the plums. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the culprit? I think it was Charlie Hodgson, actually. Oh! Oh! oh, 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 oh Thank you, Willow. Well, awesome. Thanks, guys. Right. We are heading to Sainsbury's in Chelsea, giving people a chance to get pies and pie delivered to their house. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi. Uh, giving, it, giving it the attitude. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> attitude or attitude? Oh, attitude. Oh, attitude. Oh, attitude. I'm really happy there's a pie in the <laughs> What's your favourite pie in the whole world? Uh, it's a very difficult question for a man <laughs> of my stature. <laughs> <laughs> a breakfast pie that actually did last uh, over the World Cup. They had a breakfast pie, 
So bacon, sausage, egg, uh, mushrooms, tomatoes. Beautiful pies. A three game pie, a three game a pie, yes. Some pheasants, <laughs> springbok, <laughs> throw a little bit of beef in there, mix it all up. Mmm. <laughs> Tastes good. Uh, one player in the squad has got the nickname Dare Winton. You don't right. want to tell me who it is, right. but I don't, know the, I don't know the story behind it, but when David Strettel called Mike Brown um, Dale Winton, he got really offended by it, so I don't know the story behind it, but the fact that he got offended by it, I think most of the boys are going to start calling it. Young, we were here at the Soccer Dome today, did a bit of a big rugby session training today, two sessions. What have you guys been working on? Uh, forwards do their mauling and brawling. Uh, we tend to take it a little bit more easy and, and, and practice our decision making, uh, our first phase moves. Obviously, uh, you know, that's really important for us to get on the front foot, so, so uh, it's nice to be able to do it in a dome like this. It's, it's a lot warmer than what it is outside and the surface is nice, so it's good. The Stelio Olimpico cost yeah. me 70,000. It shows that Italian rugby is getting bigger, which is a real positive. You know, they're a real force uh, to be reckoned with, uh, Italy. Um, they always turn over someone at home, if not a couple of teams. So, um, you know, we want to make sure we're not one of them. So, we've seen the guys train this week. Austin, how do you think they're going to get on in Italy? Pretty good, but first of all, thank you for inviting me to your igloo. I always wondered where Santa's little elves lived. It's, uh, it's nice, it's nice yes, and cosy. Uh, going to Rome, people think it's easier because Italy haven't got much history in the Six mm. Nations, uh, but it's not. The Italian pack is very strong and it's going to be a tough encounter for England, but I think they'll do OK. Now, you mentioned before the Scotland game that you thought Farrell would stand out. Who do you think will in Rome? I think the standout players in Rome have got to be the front five. You've got to match the Italian pack because that's, that's what they're all about. They're all about this abrasiveness, this, uh, this big Roman gladiators. And, and that's how they play. They play a very confrontational game up front. Castro Giovanni, you've got to stop him running around the field with his locks going everywhere. You've got to stop uh, Parise because he is a brilliant rugby player. And, and that's where I think it'll be won for England, in the front five. So we need Cole, we need Hartley, Corbicero, mm. and the second rows to really give us a platform to play off. So how can we get the likes of Foden, Ashton, Strettel involved? I think England just need to work out a way of getting fast ball. Now, England often play best when they hit the midfield hard with someone like Barrett, and we saw him carry the ball really well. I thought, think he was a big impact for England. And then hit down the blind side with people like Foden, Ashton, Strettel, where you isolate their front five runners and let your fast guys run against them. Prediction? I think England will, at some stage, be behind in this game. Italy always start well. Uh, I think the Italians will lead possibly for long periods of this game, but I do feel like we'll break them down, and I think England will win by seven points. Ooh, let's hope you're right. I hope so too. It'll be two weeks on the chart if I'm right. It will. Well, that's it for O2 Inside Line this week. As they say, all roads lead to Rome. Next week, we'll find out which path England took. Sign up for O2 Inside Line episode alerts at o2insideline.com and you'll never miss another episode.